make deals. Question number eight, uh, Gareth Hughes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Climate Change Issues and asks, does he agree with the statement made by the Minister for Order, the... I apologise to the, the member. I, I want some respect shown to a member at the back of the House, please. Uh, Gareth Hughes, question number Thank eight. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Climate Change Issues and asks, does he agree with the statement made by the Minister for the Environment, Amy Adams, in Rio, that money spent on fossil fuels is money that could be spent on other sustainable development priorities? And will the government reallocate the $889 million in the Emissions Trading Scheme credits in Budget 2012 towards sustainable projects in a green economy? The Honourable Tim Grocer. I certainly do agree with Minister Adams' statement at Rio, and that is the reason why we set up in June 2010 a group of countries to try and press long-term for uh, fossil fuel subsidy reform. And as it stands, that group includes uh, Costa Rica, Denmark, Ethiopia, Finland, ourselves, Norway, Sweden and Switzerland. Order. This is a primary question, so the Minister should really answer the bit that asks, will the government reallocate uh, the $889 million? I mean, this is a primary question. Speaking to the, uh, to the Speaker's point, I considered that there were two separate questions and I answered the first part of the question. But if the Speaker would like it, I can very easily answer two questions no, at order. once. Order. 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 I'm on my feet. Primary questions must be answered in full. If it's deemed the question is in order, it must be answered in full. Supplementary questions, there can only be one question asked, and if there's more than one part to a question, Minister, welcome to answer just one part, but a primary question must be answered in full. The Honourable Tim Thank Grosser. you for the clarification. Uh, no, we will not be reallocating the allocations we have given to trade-exposed industries for the very simple reason that were we to do so when those trade-exposed industries are facing competition internationally from similar industries that do not face a price on carbon, it would create such a huge increase in unemployment, and I'm sure the member would be at the forefront of any queue to complain about the unemployment were we so reckless as to follow the advice. Gareth Hughes. Does the Minister stand by his statement made in 2010 that it would be incoherent to have a market price on carbon and to be subsidising it? How then does the Minister stand by the government's spending of $25 million subsidising the acquisition of petroleum exploration data to give to the petroleum industry? And given this government in the next financial year has $1.5 billion of free emissions trading scheme credits to polluters? The Mr. Honourable Speaker. Tim Grocer. Yes, I certainly do stand by that statement. And it's time people start, stopped throwing around these loosely worded concepts of subsidies and started to reference them to the international jurisprudence that defines this. And while I would love to elaborate in detail on the SCM code and the issues of specificity, actionability and serious prejudice, were I to so elaborate, I think that my friend and colleague, the Leader of the House, would have convulsions and we don't want that. Louise, order. 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 Louise Upston, supplementary question. Supplementary question to the uh, Minister of Climate Change. Is the Minister aware of any other country with a fully comprehensive all gases, all sectors emissions trading scheme? The Honourable Tim Grocer. No. And I'd like to elaborate on that. There's, even the EU ETS exempts nearly 60% of EU27 GDP from its ETS. Gareth Hughes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question to the Minister is, can the Minister confirm that the New Zealand taxpayer is giving the oil industry in New Zealand $25 million of seismic survey data for free, and the taxpayer in the next financial year is paying $1.5 billion in emissions trading scheme credits? The Honourable Tim Grocer. Well, Mr Speaker, as far as I recall, it is a statement of fact that the government is providing $25 million to assist in seismic exploration. But we are doing this so that we can stimulate an industry that, from memory, produces something like $800 million return to the taxpayer, and it's a policy that I strongly support. Yeah. Gareth Hughes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does he think... The government's agenda of increasing petroleum exploration, giving hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayers' money to carbon polluters, 
supporting the massive lignite coal developments in Southland is putting the interest of the next generation ahead of the interests of others sorry, is putting the interest of the next generation ahead of all other interests and boldly doing the right thing as 17-year-old New Zealander Brittany Trulford has asked all world leaders to do in Rio. The no. Honourable Tim Grosser. Uh, question number... Supplementary question, Mike... I beg your pardon. Question number nine, Mike Saban. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister of Immigration...